Dero, Nesta Cortez getting the start for the New York Yankees. Obviously, friend of the program. Yeah. We loved having him in studio a couple of weeks ago. He seems ready for the moment. He had, you can make the case he's been their most consistent starter all season. Oh, absolutely, Robert. You think about it, though. First postseason start. Can he quiet the nerves? I think he can. One of the highlights of, of this year on MLB Central was having him come absolutely. in the studio. Yeah. And, I mean, you talk about just a good soul. Nestor Cortez is a good, good soul. And it's funny, didn't always come easy. He talked about... In 2018, he gets ruled five by the Orioles, goes over there. They send him back to the Yankees. Then he gets thrown in a, uh, thrown in a trade to Seattle. He ends up get, coming back to the Yankees, signing as a, a non-roster, and kind of makes the team. And he's like, Am I, I've always dominated in the minor leagues as a starter, but they keep calling me up, and they're bouncing me around. And then finally, he shows up. He bets on himself, right? He gets in the gym. Starts finding a program that works for him. Gets a little uptick in his fastball velo. Gets a little bit of confidence. Someone believing in him. And he has been dominant. So let's dive into Nestor Cortez. Can't wait to see him take the ball today. He's a showman out there. Right? He's going to give you everything he has. But it's funny. There's two or three adjustments he's made that has kind of turned him from journeyman starter into one of their best. So pause this. Bring up his 2022 ranks. Because this is pretty impressive stuff right here. And I don't, the ERA is great, right? Ninth in the game, expected ERA. I always look, used to look at opponent batting average against certain guys in opponent OPS, right? He's sixth in the entire sport. Guys are hitting a dollar 90 off him. And it's not like he has electric stuff, but it must be doing something. It must have carry through the zone. He's able to whoopsie doopsie you with his wind up and his balance points and do different things to get you not feeling comfortable. So let's dive in. The first thing we're going to focus on is his heater. I've never seen a starter, a left handed starter, have the ability to throw 92 to 93 miles an hour. He gets chase middle middle to some of the best hitters in the sport and get them to swing through it time and time again. Pause this. So why is he able to do it? do that next board his velocity has gone up he's got a velocity spike based on him talking about smashing med balls and band work and getting in the gym and getting a routine that works for him throwing bullpens a certain way so from 2018 to 2020 he was sitting at 89 guys are hitting 290 off it I mean I people at home need to understand the game of high velocity Especially for a guy like myself, and I, I was a journeyman utility guy. I caught a few moments, but 89 from the left side, four seam, I'm barreling that all day. And a lot of guys felt that way. 2021 starts to see a little bit of uptick, and then in 2022, 91.7 miles an hour. It doesn't seem like a huge jump, but look what it's done opponent average-wise. And what has happened is his ball has stayed true. It stays on plane. Run me the next board, S-Rod. Take a look at this. Inches of drop. You want to know when it's coming out of somebody's hand. So when Nestor throws his fastball, right, it's coming out of his hand, and it's going to drop on a certain plane, and guys are able to just drop the barrel of the bat on the baseball. Well, look at this. I mean, he's cut out six inches of drop, so his heater holds its line. So when you see guys like Teoscar Hernandez or Vladimir Guerrero getting beat with heater, it almost has late hop on it. You hear me talk so much about guys who throw 95 miles an hour and it's light. You see 95 there, you track 95 there. He's throwing what appears to be 91 out of his hand, and by the time it gets to home plate, it's almost got this little late scoom by you. Jose, guys I've been in the box against, Quintana. Why does he have success? Late hop. Randy Wolf, the old Phillies great, my Arizona Fall League teammate, had the ability to hop it right through the zone. And you're like, why is this guy constantly beating me with a four-seam fastball? So that's one thing to watch for. The ability to throw heater and heater counts and not get a bunch of guys to barrel it up. What's the next thing he's able to do? Let's get back into it. All right? Oh, real quick. We're going to get into the cutter right here. Esrod, he came in and he talked about the difference between his slider and his cutter. I want to, I want you to listen to this. This was unbelievable in studio. My slider is about 
77, 78 with a lot of horizontal. Um, my cutter is anywhere from 87 to 90. So you're trying to, yeah, I mean, that's more of a heat or like yeah. burying it in. Yeah, yeah. I struggled a little bit when I was throwing, going through the rough patch. I was leaving it down in the zone. So I've, you know, I've made the adjustment to come up with it and, and, and just set my sights a little higher. And he's not lying about that. He said he doesn't dive into all the metrics and, and the percentages of what he's throwing but he knows where he needs to execute certain pitches, and he has elevated his cutter in on righties. He struggled early, right? He got off to that great start. No one could hit him, and then everyone started cheating in. And then he had to make an adjustment. What was the adjustment? Let's get that cutter up in the zone. Don't allow guys to just drop the barrel on it. And look, he's beating guys off the plate. Some of the better hitters in the game throwing that nasty cutter. Bring up the heat maps for me before we get into the balance points. So take a look at it. 2021, I'm a right-handed hitter. This is from the catcher's perspective right here. I mean, that's right belt high in the slot. If, if that creeps back over, if you're able to get this to creep right to here, that's damage city in a leverage count. So what has he done in 2022? He's just elevated that cutter a little bit more. Seems to be getting inside, creating just a, a tough visual for the right-handed hitter and he's able to dot the outside corner to the lefties with it and then incorporate that slider. And he's a showman. He, he's got a lot of deception in his game, right? Let's go. I want to get back in. Oh, here's his cutter heat map on two strikes versus right-handers. So what do you cover? He can run it up and in on you. He can go back door with it. He can go down and in with it. So a lot to handle from Nestor Cortez. And he's got the wind-ups. <laughs> I mean, the ability to, to control his body and give deception and then make pitches. And he talked about when he was in studio, he makes that stuff up on the fly. And he's successful doing it. The only thing is you dive into the numbers, it's 71% heater when he starts to dipsy-do and drops down. So that would be something. Soon as I saw that, I'm like, I'm all in on the gas. But he, he's going to have... Uh, some nerves today, but I think he's going to be super confident. First postseason start. I'm interested to see how he does. Yeah, congratulations to uh, for him and his work to be putting himself in this position. And yeah. when he drops down the last two years, Nays telling me opponents five for 45. So Hang on. be on the lookout for that.